The Dark Side of Airbnb, three terrifying true scary stories. During my solo trip to Salt Lake City last year, I had the opportunity to enjoy some much needed time alone. With previous vacations always being with family, this was a refreshing change. After considering both hotels and Airbnbs in the area, I discovered that the Airbnb offered better value for money and were surprisingly more luxurious. Despite the cheaper options being located a bit further from the city, I didn't mind the extra travel since I had my own car. Ultimately, I settled for a cozy Airbnb with a well-equipped kitchen and comfortable bedroom. Arriving at 6 on a Sunday morning, the owner provided me with the password, and I settled in with all my belongings. The Airbnb exceeded my expectations, far superior to the small apartment I shared with my roommate. Resting on the couch, I turned on the TV and eagerly anticipated a tranquil evening. Fatigue quickly took hold, and I dozed off, only to wake up a few hours later around 10. Surprisingly, the TV was still on. I reached for the remote, turned it off, and made my way to the kitchen for a glass of water before retiring to the bedroom. Suddenly, as I walked from the living room to the kitchen, a chilly gust of wind brushed against me. Startled, my gaze fell upon the fully open front door. Fear gripped me as I realized I had securely closed and locked it before settling in. Questions raced through my mind as I cautiously closed the door, straining my ears for any signs of an intruder. Although not physically imposing, I found solace in my height and fitness, confident in my ability to repel any threat unless they were armed. Taking a kitchen knife for added reassurance, I conducted a thorough search of every room in the house. To my surprise, there was no sign of anyone. Perplexed, I sent a text to the homeowner, describing the unsettling incident and inquiring if someone was expected to visit. Understanding it was late, I patiently awaited their response. During the night, I meticulously secured each door, then double-checked the house before collapsing into bed, completely drained. Although sleep came easily, upon awakening, a surge of unease washed over me. To my alarm, a peculiar sound echoed outside my bedroom, not within the confines of the house, but just beyond the door. Paralyzed with uncertainty, I awaited any action from the individual lurking outside. Contemplating how they had gained entrance, I considered that only the homeowner had the door code. So I convinced myself it must be some disturbing character with an affinity for spying on Airbnb guests. Summoning courage, I emerged from bed, seizing my phone from the nightstand, intending to alert the authorities. However, my attempt to remain discreet failed, causing the intruder to hastily flee towards the front of the residence. Trembling with fear, I dialed 911, yet in the time it took for the police to respond, everything fell silent. The person had vanished. For the remainder of my vacation, I sought refuge in a hotel, astounded when the Airbnb owner issued a refund, substantiating his innocence. His genuine concern and kind-hearted nature left a lasting impression. The prospect of the owner being the culprit had already unsettled me, but the realization that it was a complete stranger intensified the dread. Perplexed by how they had gained access and their motives for stalking me, the disturbing events continued to haunt me. Above all, it is the memory of waking up to find the front door open that pervades my thoughts. Knowing that the intruder had entered and observed me asleep on the couch, their intentions unfolding in the eerie silence. It is an experience that has left an indelible mark, instilling a profound reluctance to ever stay alone at an Airbnb again. During one of my past vacations, I stayed at a cozy two-bedroom Airbnb. Although it served as a quick rest stop before my main vacation spot, it met my expectations of cleanliness and emptiness upon arrival. It was around 8 p.m. when I sat on the couch, feeling a bit drowsy only to be startled awake by the doorbell ringing. Perplexed and slightly alarmed, I glanced at the front door. Being a young woman of small stature, I tend to get easily scared, especially when alone at night and facing strangers. When I approached the door, I heard two men whispering on the other side. 
Since the door lacked a safety lock, I kept it shut and responded to their presence. They claimed to be here for the Airbnb, requesting me to open the door. Confused, I asked for clarification, not comprehending what they meant. One of the men informed me that he had booked the place for the night. Knowing that there must have been some mistake, I firmly shouted through the door, explaining that I had also booked the place and that he should contact the owner. Although I understood his potential frustration, the man didn't seem pleased with my response. I heard one set of footsteps retreat, leaving one man persistently asking me to open the door for further discussion. Faced with a momentary dilemma, I contemplated giving in, convinced by his seemingly sincere demeanor. However, a sudden urge to prioritize my safety encouraged me to adopt a cautious approach. I reported that my husband would be joining me shortly to resolve the situation. Hoping to dissuade any ill intentions related to my solitary presence, I anticipated catching the man off guard. To my surprise, he remained silent. Curiosity compelled me to glance through a small window obscured by a short curtain. My eyes fell upon a spine-chilling sight. The man I seemingly talked to faced his car, parked in the driveway, and beyond him stood a group of five individuals, lurking and concealing themselves as if awaiting a signal. Their faces were partially covered, and I could only assume there were more people on the other side of the door. Realizing that I was possibly facing a gang, considering the city I was in, fear overwhelmed me. I hastily retreated from the door, desperately attempting to control my breathing. Panic compelled me to grab my phone from the bedroom and dial emergency services, all the while hearing footsteps echoing around the house. It seemed as if I was encircled by a pack of predatory wolves, capable of smashing windows and breaking in at any moment. With shaky hands, I clutched my phone and sought solace in the bathroom while placing the calmest call I could muster. The operator, too, advised me to remain quiet and composed, assuring me that help was on its way. I stayed connected, straining to hear the sounds of footsteps outside until the horrific noise of wood bending and snapping emanated from the front door. Overwhelmed by fear, tears streamed down my face while I desperately tried to suppress any sound. Moments later, a group of intruders rushed inside, rummaging through doors and cabinets. Eventually, one neared the bathroom door and attempted to open it, but quickly retreated and shouting. The raiders continued with their looting spree until distant sirens reached their ears. In a frenzied panic, they scattered and escaped the premises. By the time law enforcement arrived, the intruders had vanished, leaving behind an emptied home and my shattered car with its looted contents. One of the officers stayed by my side, discussing the incident and informing me that they had been dealing with an upsurge in gang-related break-ins. It appeared their primary motive was robbery, rather than causing harm to residents, which explained why they left me unharmed in the bathroom, recognizing that I posed no threat. Nevertheless, the experience was undeniably terrifying. Although the incident was likely unrelated to my stay at the Airbnb that night, it has left me profoundly anxious whenever I choose to book such accommodations. I had the privilege of owning an Airbnb property for several years. However, due to the overwhelming stress of managing it alongside my regular job, I had to discontinue. Nonetheless, Airbnb offered several advantages compared to traditional renting, including the potential to earn a substantial income if the property is frequently booked. Given our location in a popular vacation area, Airbnb proved to be an excellent choice for my wife and me. While initially exciting, the demands of hosting increased as bookings multiplied. We had to ensure that everything was meticulously scheduled, arrange for cleaning services between guests, and promptly respond to messages and inquiries. Despite these challenges, things ran smoothly for a couple of years until we encountered what we believed to be a young couple as guests. Our communication was primarily through text with minimal interaction. Just like before, I sent them the unlock code upon their arrival and assumed they settled in without issues. However, around 9 o'clock in the evening, I received a text from the young man staying in our property, reporting a problem with the water supply. It caught me off guard, as I couldn't fathom how such an issue could arise. 
Nevertheless, I immediately took responsibility and requested permission to address the problem in the morning. The guest graciously agreed, and I hurriedly drove to the property. Upon arrival, I noticed two cars parked in the driveway, which struck me as peculiar, considering they were vacationing as a couple for only one night. I presumed they were visited by someone, although it should be noted that such visits are against the rules. I approached the front door, knocked, entered the code, and stepped inside. As I entered the quiet premises, an unusual sense of anticipation surrounded me. Expecting their presence, I embarked on a futile search, only to find an empty space devoid of any human figures. Fatigue weighed heavily on me, urging a swift resolution. My first instinct led me to inspect the primary water valve, hoping to unveil the absence of leaks or floods. Descending to the basement, I approached the valve and encountered a baffling sight. Everything appeared normal, without any trace of water or damage. Perplexed, I manipulated the valve, and immediately water gushed forth as if released from its captive state. I turned it further, realizing it had been intentionally shut off. Remaining in the basement, I contemplated the motive behind this perplexing act. No signs of the mysterious perpetrators accompanied my arrival. The overwhelming discomfort took hold as the realization sank in. They had orchestrated this, luring me into their scheme, perhaps seeking a discount for their stay. Determining my safety was at stake, I resolved to exit and retrieve my car, intending to contact them for clarification. As I ascended the stairs, the distinct sound of the basement door opening echoed, followed by a cascade of footsteps descending towards me. Three men stood at the bottom, appearing much older than the presumed house guest I had spoken to. Inquiring if the issue was resolved, the man who sounded familiar beckoned. Suppressing my unease, I'd assured him that the water should be functioning now, attributing the incident to a tightened valve. Avoiding blame, I simply yearned to escape their presence in the eerie basement and find solace elsewhere. Silently, they continued to scrutinize my every move, their unwavering gazes unnerving me. Attempting to depart, I maneuvered past them, striving to reach the stairs. However, my eyes caught sight of a disturbing sight, a firearm concealed in the back of the closest man's pants. For a moment, panic seized me, hastening my ascent, yet they made no effort to pursue. Leaving them behind, I hurriedly exited the premises, my mind racing as I retreated to the sanctuary of my own home. Waking my wife, I divulged the unsettling encounter, prompting her to urge a call to the authorities. Given the unexpected turn of events involving individuals unknown to us, the need for police intervention became resolute, justified by the peculiarity of the situation. I believe we waited about 20 minutes until receiving a call from an officer who stated that no one appeared to be present at the residence. Instead of opening the door, I provided the access code and the officer called back another 20 minutes later, confirming there were no signs of anyone being there. The following day, we discovered that the payment card the individual used was stolen. Upon further inspection of the house, we realized that valuable decorations and appliances had been taken. Interestingly, there was no trace of the presumed young couple. The one aspect that remained unexplained was their motive behind disabling the water supply. Perhaps they intended for me to waive their accommodation fees in order to prolong the fraudulent use of the stolen card, or they had plans to rob me at gunpoint, but their intention was never executed. It perplexes me that three unidentified and dangerous individuals would lead me into a trap in the basement, only to let me go. Although I find it difficult to comprehend, this incident prompted me to avoid visiting the house while guests were present, and a few months later, we made the decision to no longer utilize Airbnb and instead put the house up for rent. If you would like to share a true scary story with us and be featured in a future episode, please check out the details in the description. In the meantime, watch more of our videos.